What I'm seeing, actually, you see, I mean, it's a combination of As an expert of in the, the various martial arts in China, what did you think of the fighting that you saw in the but movies? Martial art has a very, very deep meaning. Hello, Fred. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? Thank you very much. I'm good. And uh, Fred, uh, today we are going to discuss a very interesting question. Sure. And this is a question that you sent to me. And it's a very interesting topic because it's um, often we see that different martial artists, different practitioners, they do the same material, they practice the same martial art style or some uh, self-defense style but anyway they look very different and this is very interesting question why why so tell please your opinion why they look so different practicing the same material um, it has a lot to do with the training method and besides the training method there's also obviously how much that practitioner understand their particular material um, we think we kind of, we, we kind of loosely discussed before, right? Like I, I, I train in a, in a system called Pikiri Tertia, but if you, if you've seen anything we've done on video, you'll notice, well, many people had noticed there were differences on our approach versus, uh, other people. Um, there are certain things we do now that. You know, uh, well, there's certain things that we don't do that a lot of um, other groups still do. Uh, from my from my perspective, um, they still a lot. They still do a lot of kind of um, the antiquated approach. Uh, whereas what we're doing is a lot more direct and addresses really tries to address the, um, how how what you're training. The materials you're training and the drills you're, you're learning in your martial art is transferable as quickly as possible to a realistic application, basically. All right. And it's uh, it's often it's it's one of the most um, challenging uh, topics to to uh, to tackle because you know martial arts they're traditional. A lot of them are traditional, and when you're trying to do a lot of the same stuff for for modern time. You know, there's just a lot of things that are no longer uh, relevant. You know, uh, but you wanna uh, you wanna continue keeping your um, your your martial culture alive. So, how do you differentiate from doing the kind of um, doing the drills that really have no practical use versus focusing? You know, you're you're training to something more immediate and and direct. Basically, like you know, okay, how do you all those techniques you're learning? How do you how do you train it to become useful and effective um, sooner, right? Because nowadays nobody, no one really, nobody really likes to train for many many years before they they realize what they're doing is you know uh, uh, effective or not. Right? Most people want to uh, see the results um, sooner. And that's kind of what we we try to um, address um, more, as opposed to okay, well, you need to spend a uh, couple of years before you even understand, you know, the the basic uh, foundations of the art. You know, we're like, no, we we're gonna teach it to you uh, as soon as possible. So when you go out and practice, you're you're more informed and you know, you have the right information so that you can you can do your practice more more effectively as i understood right that the methodology is the most important answer for this question uh, people use a different methodology of the training for in the different parts of the world they do it very different because of the methodology but uh, where where they take this methodology it, it'll have a lot to do with the particular instructor and how much how well they understand it, right? Because otherwise, you know, anyone anyone can claim what they're doing or their training methodology is applicable to, I don't know, say, uh, military training. But it's like, okay, well, how do you determine what aspect of it is applicable to military, military training if you're showing the same material that you would teach a traditional martial arts student? 
you know, they're kind of not the same thing, you know, um, same as um, the that common argument about, uh, you know, do traditional methods work for uh, self-defense or, or modern uh, street fighting or something? Yeah, the, yes and no, but if, if you, you know, if you, you know, if you train something straight up traditional, of course, it's not going to transfer to like street fighting or self-defense because it's a different time. This is a different time. You know, the methods that were done hundreds of years ago don't apply to, you know, to uh, our environment now, this, our situations now, you know. Um, uh, so when I, when I talk about the, um, the methodologies, yeah, being different, it's, you know, it, you have to see if whether or not what the training involves you know, addressing, you know, addressing things like range and timing, the, the type of um, physical conditioning it requires. You can actually, you know, do these techniques, right? Because, you know, anyone can teach you these techniques, but if you're not physically able to, to do it, it's, it's useless. And it could be the most effective uh, martial art in the world. But if you cannot do it because your teacher did not have the right training method to help you develop that, then you're, you're not going to be effective with it, right? That's why, um, you know, I, I think it's a lot more, yeah, like I said, I, it's a lot more to do with uh, the training method than the style or the system itself, although that, that, that accounts for a lot too, right? I mean, if, you're, if you want to train a, a combat system that deals with uh, edge weapons or knife, then of course, right, you're, you know, you're not going to study Taekwondo, right? You're going to look for a system that teaches the mechanics of uh, uh, the mechanics of using a knife and how to defend against a knife, and how to train your body, you know, your body mechanics so that you can use such a such a tool. Uh, uh, and again, it could be, it could, you know, it could be whatever system it is, right? They, whatever their but whatever their training methodology is, it needs to be effective and. Uh, and uh, and directly address you know how to how to how to train for uh, you know when people say reality will re- what are you really talking about you're talking about uh, what environment you're going to be in and also you know again at what distance and um, you know your proximity to your opponent and how to how to properly recognize the threat and you know deal with it right not so much. Uh, traditional techniques uh, or, 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 any, or any claims that, you know, these techniques come from the most effective whatever art. It's like, okay, you know, show me the training method that addresses that and makes that an effective art, right? Mm-hmm. So there is another question arises. If uh, method is so important for the training, and uh, so what you can say about the method itself? How it's look, how it should looks like, what it consists, what's parts of the method, uh, what what we mean when we say method. You're talking more about the scientific approach to it. So it's go again. It's going to involve. Uh, it's going to involve more, you know, uh, body mechanics and uh, and really, it has to be based more on. Um, combat principles, not techniques. You know, for instance, you have two people and they say, okay, here's, here's a technique to attack somebody, but they're just standing in front of each other and one guy is talking and showing techniques. That's not really a, that's not a very effective approach, right? The more effective approach is if there's some feedback from both of them. So if you're going to, you know, show me an attack that I'm supposed to defend, it needs to be more dynamic. You have to move. You can't be standing in the same place and uh, I understand it's necessary sometimes when you're trying to uh, teach somebody who's not very well coordinated but you, you really should make a effort to um, to make them start moving more more dynamically again a majority of martial arts being taught even the ones that claim to be military or combative is very static you know they they do a technique and then they stop and then the other person does their technique 
you know, I, I've done that training in the past, and for me, it never really proved to to really work. Uh, that training method doesn't work, um, you know. And uh, and again, I'm speaking from just my own my own particular uh, system that I train in. You know, there was one approach that was um, very, uh, you know, very okay. I stop. You do technique. Okay, my turn. You know, uh, and you just take turns uh, and you know, not effective, and then I started training with a different teacher, the training method, same system, but the training method, very different, very dynamic, um, it's um, more aggressive uh, in, in a lot of ways, because, I mean, really, if you're training uh, um, for more uh, combative um, situation, more of a combative approach, you, you cannot be static and standing still and just, you know, uh, very cooperative, right? There's some cooperation, but you know you need to feel the threat of your partner uh, when they do an attack, and you're supposed to train to to uh, to to counter that attack, or you train to de- deliver your own attack. It needs to be it needs to be a little bit more um, aggressive, and uh, you know the energy needs to be more realistic. So we can say that this uh, method can include. Uh, scientific approach and at the same time the certain physical training approach what else yeah well it's a combination of all those things right um, the scientific approach again depending on the system I mean that could be you know you know they're all different uh, of course it's physical so the physical element has to be there um, and again you can't be you know training something that's supposed to be uh, dealing with violence and you're doing everything very slow. I mean, the slow, you need to do the slow to understand the movement. But once you once you move from basic um, understanding of the movement to now kind of the, the physical application of it, it needs to become more violent and more aggressive. So the training has to address, you know, how do you go from, you know, nice and slow to, you know, fast and fast and violent. Yeah, because then you then you also train, uh, you know, um, how the person can manage their, you know, the adrenaline, right? Um, how to control your fear. And uh, uh, during a during a during a, a sudden um, violent encounter, you know, you're training with the knife, then you need to understand that this is a very dangerous um, item uh, implement. And you need to know how to, first you need to know how to use it so that you can understand how to defend against it, right? Because that's what's better way to, uh, to defend against a weapon by understanding the weapon itself, right? Like our particular system based on principles and then the, and then the physical execution of those principles. Um, you know, you, when you learn, while you're learning the, the physical uh, execution of those principles, you're also learning the... The strategies and the tactics that go with that, so that you know when these things are supposed to be supposed to be used, when are these uh, techniques are appropriate. I mean, you can call the physical uh, aspect also a scientific um, approach, right? Because there, there's got to be a method to developing the the physical part of the the training. Mm-hmm. Right? It can't be just a, a collection of exercises to you know. Uh, you know, uh, develop your, I don't know, your fitness level or something. I mean, there, there has to be a reason why you're developing fitness, uh, you know, uh, with a very, very specific purpose. You know, okay, well, you know, why are you doing these certain um, cardiovascular exercises? Well, to develop the endurance to continue fighting with that weapon or without that weapon. So you have the... Uh, the scientific, the principal approach, the physical, uh, you know, um, and everything to tie it together. Obviously, the the intellectual part of it, right? Um, and that's where you you need to you know understand you know strategies, uh, tactics, uh, uh, how to you know how to deal with your particular situation in your environment. Um, so um, so yeah, I guess. Uh, that's what I guess you you need 
to make your uh, make your 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 um, your um, combat training uh, more realistic and effective. You know, and again, you know, we can we can get into like the physical stuff uh, as well, but you know, that's a little bit more uh, in detail, right? The, the second question uh, that you wanted to discuss with me it is about uh, what the difference between uh, martial arts and military style. When you hear the word martial arts, uh, what comes to mind, right? Uh, people in white uniforms and black belts and uh, people doing forms, stuff like that, which is, it's fine, right? In, in, to me now, uh, after I've gotten some experience, I, I have a slightly different take on what what a martial art is, what a martial system is, or a combat system is, you know, and how do I differentiate one from the other, right? To me, uh, martial art, it's a kind of, um, it's the word art, right? It's more of a, like a, a, a personal expression, if you, if that makes any sense, right? Um, a martial system or a combat system is, more of a, a science-based approach to, you know, to, to fighting, to combat. A, a combat system has a more direct approach for a very specific purpose, which is, again, uh, fighting, learning how to use weapons for fighting uh, or self-defense, whereas a martial art is more about the, the cultivation of, uh, I don't know, your, your physical expression uh, uh, of that, martial style, whatever it is, and it's also because it's an art, you know, you tend to kind of, you're kind of learning somebody else's interpretation of what that is versus, um, you know, uh, what it really is, right? Again, the scientific method doesn't really care for, you know, uh, you know, your, your, um, aesthetics or anything like that. It, it, it's, it's about the numbers and results, right? Uh, it's kind of like, um, say, because uh, yeah, I, I work as a professional artist, so I, I often make this um, comparison. Uh, it's like a painting, um, right? Um, say you and I are, we're both painters, right? Um, we both learn how to use um, the paintbrush, uh, oil paints, you know, the medium, the canvas, we all know, we, we know the system for how to paint a picture, but in the end, you, you are, you know, you are going to express your art differently than how I'm going to express my art. So I'm going to paint a certain way and you're going to paint a certain way, even though we use the same, the same tools, the same uh, methods, right? So it's a, it's a, you know, the art is the, it's a, it's an, exp to me, it's a, the, the person's personal expression. The, the systematic approach is, I, I guess, the more scientific, uh, um, kind of the more scientific and direct approach to, uh, um, you know, application. That's the best, that's the best way I can put it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, when we split all all of the world of martial arts, military system, self-defense system, if we take all of this and we will split it to the three, uh, we can say that we have three parts of the all this martial art world. It's like a daily, a military, and this tactical part. The way you have to protect yourself, but at the same time, you have to protect yourself and not to go to the prison. And the tactical part is the most difficult one. What do you think about this uh, classification? Uh, this is, I mean, this is why, um, you know, in, uh, in self-defense or, uh, well, now martial arts also, they teach you about the, uh, you know, what they call uh, situational awareness, right? Um, uh, understanding your environment. Because it's not like, right, um, somebody attacks you, they're right in front of you and they put their hands up and like, all right, Mary, I'm going to attack you now. You know, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it never happens that way, right? It's usually, it's a, it's a predator who's hiding out in the shadows in the dark where you can't see them and they're watching you. You know, they're watching you work to your car and they're watching how you're moving. And they, if they, if they feel like, um, you look like you're a good target, they're going to follow you. Right. And, God forbid something bad happened, right? Unless you know how to, you know how to detect that 
that danger and do something to avoid having to physically engage in self-defense, right? Because there are things you can do to avoid that, right? I mean, they teach you, a certain, there's a lot of things we, they teach you or in, 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 our, in our organization, you know, we, we teach people that there are measures you can take to avoid getting into a physical confrontation, right? Like avoiding getting to a fight, that kind of stuff. Like uh, just because you're training in uh, knife, uh, knife fighting doesn't mean you should look for a knife fight. You have to be aware about um, where potential danger can come from. Third part, I guess, you know, the, the invisible, the invisible danger, being, being able to be uh, aware and uh, constantly be um, watching out for it, you know. Thank you very much, Fer. Do you have something also that you want to say? If you are uh, looking for um, uh, training and, you know, you're in the San Francisco area and uh, you want to learn uh, uh, P.E. Tertia Kali training, you know, we're, we're here in uh, the San Mateo area. Uh, you can visit our website, uh, www.ptk-peninsula.com. Um, and, uh, you know, we're accepting new students uh, always. Do as much research as you can on the person and, and the system that they teach, right? Uh, a lot of times it's not so much just the system alone that makes uh, it effective. It's also the person teaching it. So, you know, uh, don't listen to anyone and say, uh, you know, if they hear, oh, that, that style is no good. Well, find out for yourself, you know, if it's good or not, right? Uh, again, do your homework. Uh, also, don't uh, don't follow trends. Just, okay, oh, uh, knife fighting is popular now, so I'm going to do knife fighting too. Well, uh, sorry, uh, understand just because you're learning how to use a knife, you're, you're not a knife fighter. You're not a knife fighter. You're learning how to use a knife. Right? But, you know, unless you engage in a fight every week with a knife, you're not a knife fighter. So... You get that out of your head uh, now. Um, you know before you before you get started. There there are too many people that get into Filipino martial art and think they're knife fighters, right? And, and, and it's just, in my opinion, it's laughable, and it kind of doesn't do any service to to uh, to us to to our, to our martial art because there's you know the people are not they're not understanding what it's really about. It's about discipline. You know, self-discipline, right? Uh, thanks for talking with me for a little bit. Thank you very much. What I'm seeing, actually, you see, I mean, it's a combination As an expert of in the, the various martial arts in China, what did you think of the fighting that you saw in the but movies? Martial art has a very, very deep meaning.